the citizenship rather than the nationhood in order to have a national unity. Because in the citizenship, the one thing has been stressed, which means that you have to give your loyalty to the state. You have to be united in, in order to defend the state. Because of the new of, or foreign talent policy, more importantly perhaps because at that time you could argue that the globalization already started. The movement of the peoples become, bec became much more intensive. Therefore, uh, the, um, uh, more talents or more migrants are coming to Singapore. Minister Giorgio, uh, in the year 2000, he made a statement. He says that now Singapore has become an immigrant state again, immigrant society again. This is in the year 2000. He said that, you know, every two baby bonds, there was one new Singapore permanent resident coming. Every four marriages in Singapore, one of the couple, in fact, married to a foreigner. And Singapore, in fact, was already, you know, I hate to use the word, flooded by the newcomers, but more and more newcomers are already in Singapore. So Singapore became uh, an immigrant state, immigrant society again. One point that we need to remember here. <coughs> Singapore has to be economically viable. And Singapore, in order to maintain political stability, it needs to have economic stability. The legitimacy of the government, in fact, in, uh, is partially, if not largely, based on performance legitimacy. The economic performance has to be good. And if Singapore did not adopt the policy of foreign talents, then Singapore economy would have not been able to develop. Singapore would have not been able to be transformed from the third world state to the first world state. Of course, it has something to do with the government, the government legitimacy as well. The performance legitimacy has to be achieved. Therefore, the nationhood or nation building was not emphasized and the emphasis becomes citizenship. Is citizenship comparable to nationhood? I would argue that there are two different concepts. Nationhood, in fact, is a social and cultural, even psychological concept. Citizenship, in fact, is a legal concept, legal, but often it is also political. Can you base your nation building on citizenship? Yes, but it was only the first step. After that, you have to go further to advance it, to transform the culture of the population. However, the problem is this. If you have single nationality or single citizenship, that would be fine. What happened when 
people begin to ask for dual nationality or dual citizenship, which means that you are having divided royalty. Can you build a nation with divided royalty? This is, I think, a, a question that we have to answer. And then people discover that as far as uh, Singapore concerned, the ethnic consciousness became very important again. In NUS, this, the students conducted a survey, but this survey is not scientific anyway, because uh, it was not really random sampling and so forth. But it is interesting uh, to mention here. The survey was conducted in 2004, see, in, the, in, in fact, on the website. And 750 students took place, participated in the survey. And of which they discover that the ethnic, the consciousness, the term used was race, racial consciousness, reached about 67%, 67.8%, 7, while the national consciousness was slightly below 66.8%, which means that ethnicity in Singapore in 2004 was still very strong, as strong as national identity, as strong as yeah, <coughs> what you call wanting to belong to a nation. And globalization continue to challenge nation building in Singapore, and the rise of China was also or is also a very uh, great attraction. Some of the Chinese, perhaps, especially the new mig migrants who became Singaporean after China becomes uh, strong again, may maybe, I say maybe, reoriented toward China. Singapore nation building, you know, is very short. It is about 50 years only. Although you can argue that, or oh, before that, you know, the Singapore consciousness was already there, but it was domain, it was not really stirred up, it was not really, you know, being cultivated. Therefore, it remained domains for a while. I think the real nation building, which were done or <coughs> advocated by the state, only started in 1965. And a historian of, uh, in Singapore uh, is uh, Edwin Lee, uh, published a book in 2G08, in which he entitled the book as an unexpected nation, Singapore unexpected nation. In fact, no one expected that Singapore would have succeeded to become a nation. Because, of, because it was an unexpected nation, Singaporeans were not prepared, not well prepared to build this particular nation. But eventually, it is quite successful, I think, as a nation. Yet another writer, this Linda Lim, I think it's a very well-known article which was the publicized in the Straits Times and, 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 and other publications. And she said that Singapore, in fact, is a place rather than a nation. He jumped to this conclusion from, she jumped to this conclusion from her observation in the United States. She is a Singapore economist teaching in the United States, make a name there, and she met a lot of Singapore students in the United States, graduate students especially, and her impression is the graduate, the students of Singapore in the United States, 
you know, did not show any emotional tie to Singapore. What they are looking for is only a good living. To be a nation, emotional tie is very important. Singapore now continuing its nation building. Would you argue that Singapore has abandoned nation building? Would you argue that Singapore, in fact, has replaced nation building with citizenship building? My answer is this, though. Nation building is a long-term project. Very few nations has completed nation building. Many are still doing it. Some are more advanced than others. Yet, they have never reached the end. Will Singapore eventually become a nation? Only times can tell. Thank you. Uh, you mentioned about the flood of newcomers to Singapore. Well, I'm interested in knowing uh, your opinion whether this flood of newcomers will weaken or strengthen the nation building in Singapore. And uh, my second question is related to the, uh, well, in Southeast Asia, what do you see as the greatest challenge uh, for Southeast Asian uh, nation to uh, sustain or enhance its their nation building? Yeah, uh, there are many migrants, I think, in Singapore, and the Singaporeans feel about it. But the terms, I mean, should not, um, I say flooded, I mean, try to eject it, I think, a little bit. In fact, it was not really the case. Nevertheless, I think the government has also reviewed the policy. It has uh, tightened, I think, the immigration the policy and so forth. But I think Singapore, in order to survive and develop, you need talents. Without a, a talents, uh, the birth rate here is very low. I mean, everybody knows about this. And then, however, how much a talents that you need, I think, in order to maintain, you know, a certain the standard, perhaps that is the question. Yeah, and and and. Uh, without foreign talents, definitely I think Singapore would not be able to prosper and to maintain as the first world. This is my view. Perhaps I think you disagree with me. Uh, please uh, um, put forward your own argument. And in terms of uh, the uh, Southeast Asian nation, you know, Southeast Asian nations, in fact, they are still uh, very young. And when, as I mentioned, I think earlier, Southeast Asian nations, in fact, were based on colonial state. They are state nation rather than nation state. You have a colonial state first, and based on the colonial state, then you build a nation. Not the other way around. Yeah. And when the colonial power came to this part of the world and established their colonial state, they ignore ethnic city, they ignore everything. They just arbitrarily uh, draw their boundaries. Therefore, you can see that a lot of ethnic groups were divided. Not only that, most important, some of the ethnic groups with which were in uh, animosity, which were not very friendly, they were put together. Therefore, it becomes a problem in terms of establishing a nation. For instance, in the Philippines, in Thailand. In fact, you have two nations one is the Filipino Christian nation, the other one was a Moro nation, Moro Islamic or Muslim nation. And these two nations were put together unless the, the national elites were able to see eye to eye 
I think otherwise, the problem, the nation building problem, will never been able to be resolved unless they want to go their separate way. The same thing can also be said about Thailand. Thailand, the Muslim in the south, in fact, is still a major problem to the central government. And, and Myanmar has the same problem, even until now, you see. Uh, the ethnic issues have never been resolved. Perhaps, I think, because of the nation that they wanted to build, it was a kind of ethno-nation based on Burma or Myanmar, and not really based on the ethnic groups. So, the Southeast Asian nation, the nation building process had to be continued. But they have to adopt the multi-ethnic nation proposal. And if they do not continue the nation building process, I'm afraid that the nation of that particular state may fall apart. It's a very good lecture, but a very disturbing one. I'm very worried. Uh, Leo is a friend of mine for more than 40, 50 years, I would say it is. But uh, the message I get now is very confused. Where are we? What are we? This is a place or this is a nation? Are we working towards a nation building? Or as you say, with our talents, we cannot survive. And we are getting a lot of talents. In. And then that will reach, we are reaching another state of immigration, uh, migration society. Back to square one. What are we? Where are we? Frankly speaking, I don't really have an answer. But I just share with you yeah, some of my some some of some of my thoughts. Yeah. Singapore as a modern state without resources, only manpower. Even manpower is very limited. And we want to continue to survive. We want to continue to be a modern nation, a leading one in the region. Then we have in technology and other things, we have to be ahead of other countries. Without foreign talents, this sort of thing cannot be achieved, which, which means that if we are not progressing rapidly, we will be taken over by others. In order to progress rapidly, what should we do? Do we open our door widely? Or in fact, we should restrict ourselves. Okay, we open the door but we make sure that we will be able to absorb uh, the foreigners in terms of the proportion that is perhaps very important. But if we adopt that kind of policy, what is going to result in? The economic growth will slow down. Because if we are very selective, and if the economic performance is not very well, would it affect the legitimacy of the government? Because the, as I argued earlier, that performance legitimacy here is very important, especially I think for Singapore and many modern states. And so we have a dilemma here. You know, if, if we are prepared to, to sacrifice I mean, economic performance, perhaps we will be able to build a nation faster than slower. However, 
if we are not able to do this, then we can only settle with the second best. We go back to become an immigrant state again, then from there, once we are able to reach a certain point, then we begin to establish a nation.